What's up everybody, Ricky Kruth here coming at you from my office today. Welcome back to another episode of the pros and cons of being a real estate agent where I'm giving you behind the scenes look of unedited video, me talking about my business. This is my business. I'm talking about the good and the bad. Okay, today I want to talk to you about losing a listing. This happened to me just a couple days ago. Okay, uh, a property owner called me. They've been following me for a while. Um, I didn't realize it, but they've been following me for a while. They called me. We already had some rapport built up through the email, through the social media, and all the different things. And so they call me. We start talking. We have a really good conversation. We're really connecting. Okay, and we talk about commission, we talk about price, we negotiate everything, and I'm feeling really good about this. He didn't commit, okay, and I didn't want to push him too hard, right, because I, I could feel like he was still trying to, I didn't know exactly what it was, but I could, I could feel something was still going on there that he was trying to figure out. Little did I know, he was trying to figure out what agent to go with, right, so, but he did tell me to send him the listing agreement, so I sent him the listing documents, I texted him, I said, did you get it? He said, yes, I'm not necessarily going to pull the trigger today, but I'll let you know. I said, great. I have a photographer ready on standby to go take professional pictures of your condo, and we can get it on the market ASAP. A day goes by. The next day, I realize he listed it with another agent. Why did he list it with another agent? Because that other agent told them a higher price. They told him a higher price than what I quoted him. Okay, so let me run through the scenario with you. I told the owner a price that I felt like was the highest price that we could possibly ask to get the most out of that condo. Okay, period. The, the market is really price sensitive where I am. If you're a little bit off, it's a big deal. Okay, buyers for some reason don't want to insult owners with offers. Okay, when they're asking too much. Okay, it's a weird thing, but it's real. Also, benchmarks. You know, you don't want to price it at 309 when it really should be at 299 because when people search up to 300, they're not going to see it if it's 309. When it's probably going to sell for 295. It's just going to take you longer to get to 295 if you price it at 309. It's better to be priced a little closer to what you'll take and be more firm than to have a lot of wiggle room and lose lose showings, lose possible buyers, right? Be priced closer to where you'll take under the possible benchmark get them in the door, get the buyers in the door, get them emotionally attached to the property. This was a strategy that, that I use on sellers to price it right. And I'm being incredibly honest with them about it. I'm not trying to get them to list lower, I'm trying to get them to price it right. Because most sellers in a listing agreement, a listing presentation, a listing appointment, they want to price it just a little bit more than what you're saying all the time. They want to price it 10,000 higher. They want to just push the envelope just a little bit. So it's okay to push the envelope here and there, it just depends on the situation, but especially in this market, it's flattening out because of interest rates over the last 18 months. You wanna price it right on the money, okay? And if you don't, you could be setting yourself up for something that's gonna sit on the market for a while, okay? So this agent comes in and says, probably we're gonna price it higher, price of this, probably had the seller all excited, and boom, listen. That's fine. That's all fine and dandy. Now, let me tell you what I think is going to happen. Let me tell you what I hope is going to happen. What I hope happens is that the listing sells for full price in a day and everybody's happy. That's what I really genuinely hope happens. What do I think is going to happen? I believe that that property will sit on the market for a while. It'll eventually become expired. The owner will turn around and call me back and say, Ricky, I'm ready to give you a shot. I'm going to list it for the right price because I'm going to explain the whole scenario of, remember when I talked to you last time and I told you what was going to happen and I told you this is why we needed to price it at this price and, and that's why we needed to do that? Then he's going to say yes. I'm going to say, okay, great. I'm sending you the listing agreement for the correct asking price. But I really genuinely hope it sells. We'll see. I'll be watching it. Um, other than that, losing the deal, I gave myself five seconds to think about that for a second, about how much it stings to lose the deal that you thought you had, and to realize how much future time I just got back, that I don't have to fill out a listing, put it on MLS, get pictures, set up showings, deal with negotiations, contracts, inspectors, appraisals, title companies. I don't have to do any of that anymore. Now I can take all that time and go find five more deals. And that's what fires me up is the fact that I can multiply my business because I lost this deal. I can multiply that deal by five right this second. That's what I'm doing. 
I put six under contract last week. I'm already three this week. It's Tuesday, right? And I'm looking for my next one. I got seven listings in the last two weeks and I'm on fire right now because I'm putting in the work to try to figure out who's next. Who can I help? I don't care about what I did last week. I don't care about what I did today or even an hour ago. I want to know who I can help, who's new on my list, what, where can I call somebody, how can I help somebody, do I need to make calls, do I need to call past clients, do I need to circle prospect, expires for sale by owners, following up with internet leads, what do I need to do right now to find somebody that I can help put a deal together for them that's going to help them through something in their life. People buy and sell for a reason of something bigger than buying or selling. It's something going on in their life and that's what I want to know about. Why are you buying or selling and how can I help you accomplish that? That's what I want to know. How can I help you accomplish a bigger goal than just buying or selling a piece of property? That's not what this is about. We're in the people business, not the real estate business. With that, I'm out of here. Thank you guys for tuning in on this episode of the pros and cons of being a real estate agent. I hope you got something out of it. Let me know if there's anything in the world I can do for you. Click subscribe, hit the bell. We'll talk to you soon.